Hi everyone. Well, I'm as usual doing a little bit of maintenance on the RV10 and Carol comes outside and says, don't you think you ought to do a video and show everybody else? <laughs> so here we are. Thanks for watching. It'll be quick. What I've noticed lately, you know, we've got 2,500 hours on our RV10 now. And uh, it, of course it's summer and it's been hot, but I have noticed some of the temperatures are running a little hotter with regards to cylinder head temps. And of course we've had some 9,500 degree temperatures as well. But in the process of looking around, what I notice if you zoom in here, you can see that the baffling material after 2,500 hours has kind of taken a set and it's, it, it's laying down. It's not making a really good seal. And I took some pictures that we'll add here and still, I actually got my camera up underneath there while the cowling was on and I could see it wasn't making a real good seal anymore. So what I'm doing is taking the time here to replace all of this old kind of rubberized uh, what we typically used for bath seal with some nice high temp silicone uh, baffling. You can get this stuff at Aircraft Spruce. It's a, uh, I can tell you the part number here, it's a uh, 05-00781-3. It comes in a, you know, a roll, three, four foot rolls, or you can order how much you want by the foot. And it's about four inches, three inches across, and it works really nicely for here. So hopefully this will last another 2,500 hours or longer. This is a much higher quality baffling material than this stuff. So we'll see how that goes. And then one of the other things I've noticed recently is a little bit of nose wheel shimmy when I touch down. And, uh, you know, again, 2,500 hours. So what I'm going to do is uh, replace the Belleville washers on the nose gear. For those of you who are working on your RV-10, you're basically on the bottom. And we'll take a picture for you once I get the nose uh, uh, thing off there to show you. The Belleville washers, what they do is you set those for a breakout for so that the nose wheel will actually not shimmy when you touch down. Now, you got to be careful when you're putting these Belleville washers on. They are cupped. I don't know if you can see this. What I'm going to do to exaggerate the cup is put them together wrongly. So now you can see the gap between them. So the way they go on is towards each other, okay? The cup towards each other like that, so that the outside bearing edges here ride against each other. And if you zoom in there, I don't know if I need to get a flashlight on that, but you can see the gap that leaves on the center. So your nose fork axle goes down right here, and then we're going to use a nut and tighten this up until we get about 25 to 27 pounds of breakout force on the nose gear. These do go on. You can lightly lubricate them, some grease. And uh, typically what happens the first time you set them after about 20, 25 hours, you may have to go back and readjust them, and then they should be good. So uh, hopefully that eliminates some of the shimmy that I've been seeing lately. So now that we've got this all attached, you can see we've laid a bead of silicone around this and we want to quickly get the top on before this dries. And so we'll let that dry overnight. Um, and so use some high temp RTV, either the silicone adhesive or the Dow 736 seems to work well. And you can see in some areas you've got to make some cuts because it's a curved area and we want it to lay down nicely when it's in there. If you don't make some slits in there, you'll end up with uh, gaps like this as it tries to fill the thing and you'll just get some leaks in the air. So anyway, this should make a, a much nicer seal now and we'll take some before and after pictures looking inside the cowling. We'll attach them so you can see the difference. Okay, now that we got all of the uh, RTV on and we've pushed down the silicone uh, baffling material there, it's important before the silicone sets to actually get the cowling on. So you can see here, we've put it on, and then I get in there with, uh, through the oil door with a bore scope and or a mirror and flashlight and make certain that all the baffling is wrapped the same way. Sometimes the first time you'll do that, you'll have to push in there uh, with your arm and pull some of it back so it gets in place. But you want to do that as quickly as possible. And then now we're going to let it sit overnight, cure, and we'll pull it off in the morning and show it to you. So my apologies, I went too fast again and Carol caught me. So I mentioned to you we were going to replace the Belleville washers. You can zoom in down here and see where these go. These are the two washers right here. I showed you in the picture how they had to be the cup side towards each other. You can see grease extruding out uh, between the two uh, Belleville washers right there. 
there's a nut on the bottom there with a cotter key in it. So basically what you do and what I do is just kind of jack up. You've got to get the nose wheel off the ground. So you can do that in a few ways. You can use a jack like I've done here, right underneath the nose. You could lift it up using an A-frame or at the shop what we'll do is we have a big cement uh, barrel that pulls down on the tail tie down to lift this off. But the reason why you have to do that is once you get the new Belleville washers on or if you're doing maintenance on them, We've got to set what's called the breakout force here. In other words, we don't want this thing real loose such that it does a grocery cart maneuver when you land. So the book calls for about 26 pounds of breakout force right on the axle center line here. So basically what you can do is just use a, you know, some kind of electronic or fish scale. Here's one from Anti-Splat Arrow we use. And you put it right here and you just pull while you're watching it. And we want about 26 pounds right there. We've got 25. So we're close enough there. What you'll find playing with this uh, lock nut on here, just a tiny fraction of a movement will make a big difference in the breakout pressure. So I'm happy with 25 pounds. Uh, I checked it before we started. We had about 10 pounds. So that's why we were getting the nose wheel shimmy upon landing. So uh, again, as I mentioned, we'll check that breakout for us probably in another 15 to 20 hours and then it should be good. I've seen them once you set them for the second time, they just seem to last uh, you know, for a long time. I do take this apart annually and do lubricate it. We make certain before you do it, you put some, uh, and I use number five grease here, uh, both on, there's a Zerk fitting here for the brass inner lining there of the nose fork, and then uh, kind of just wipe a uh, thin film on the Belleville washers as well, okay? So I know some of you are wondering, was well, there anything wrong with the ones that I took off? So here's a picture of them on the bench all cleaned up. You can see some wear spots, and when I put them together the way they're installed on the nose fork, there actually was a gap that wasn't consistent around the inner side. So I don't know if they're worn out. Uh, I do know that I've had to uh, tighten up the lock nut here more than twice in the last year, and you don't normally have to do that. So I'll keep you posted and we'll see if uh, changing them made a difference. But I'd like to think so. Not usually ever had any problems with them. So there you have it. Uh, this week's maintenance tips for RVs.